You want to shift your sex drive into full throttle? This is Dr. Marissa, affectionately called the Asian Oprah, inviting you to tune into my monthly series called Sexual Healing with Dr. Marissa, the new Asian Dr. Ruth, every last week of the month. Determined to make pleasure a G-rated topic. Exclusively on UBN Radio every Tuesday at noon Pacific Standard Time or www.ubnradio.com or on the free app for a show about hope and happiness. Peace in and peace out. Now that you've found UBN Radio and discovered our quality talk shows, it's time to spread the word to friends, family, and the universe. 24 hours of music and talk. Radio without limits. That's why people keep coming back for more. That's UBNRadio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. To be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fett on UBNRadio.com. And welcome. My name is Dr. Marissa, affectionately known as the Asian Oprah. And you are tuned in to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every weekday Tuesday at Naturally High Noon on Universal Broadcasting Network out of the Sunset Gower Studios and Thursday and now Saturday on my syndicated CNBC News Radio channel KCAA AM 1050. And you can also call in on that 832-999-1050 if you are not near a car. <laughs> so there's plenty of ways to get me and this is a show about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip no scandal, and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I want you to focus on your own reality show, your own life, and how to be happy 88% of the time. And yes, Marvin Gaye is in the studio because it is the last week of the month. And before that, I just wanted to give a peace shout in and out to Amanda at DMV. Uh, <laughs> I know I had to go to the DMV. It's a long story. But uh, I found someone very helpful. And so I wanted to, to say peace in and peace out to her. But back to sex. Every last week of the month for the last year, I have focused on sexual healing based on some personal and also having Dr. Pat Allen on uh, back in Valentine's a year ago. And what came out of that session was one, this outpouring from my listeners saying, oh my gosh, that was so great. You know, it's great that you talk about sex and it's great that you talk about pleasure because we, you know, we're not comfortable talking about it or I'm not comfortable with my own body. I'm not feeling like I'm getting satisfied. I don't think I'm too old for sex. I'm too, uh, um, I'm too hurt to have a relationship. And so this series was born. And so if you've missed any of the episodes, I've had great guests, Davey Ward, popular co-host of mine, Dr. Robin Milhausen out of University of Guelph, uh, Human Sexuality Studies, lots of researchers, as well as those trying to uh, help with sexual healing. Uh, Nina Smart, Dr. Nina Smart, uh, uh, trying to reduce uh, female genital mutilation in Sierra Leone. So tons and tons and tons, well, not that many, hundreds of, of wonderful episodes around healing when it comes to this one area of life that is absolutely can make happy or very unhappy. And today is no exception to the rule. We I have brought uh, all the way, actually, from my other station, from KCAA, uh, Linda Gross, who is an author and also another co-host on KCAA on a show called The Men's Advocate. And she just came out with her newest book called The, the let's see, where is it? It is Mastering Women. The Definitive Guide to Answering and Being Effective with Women. She's interviewed about 20,000 people, not that many. And so she's here in the studio. Please, without further ado, welcome Linda Gross. Thank you, Dr. Marissa. 
It's Welcome. a pleasure to be here. Absolutely. Pleasure to have you here. And so let's get right to it <laughs> because I was on your show a couple of weeks ago and you definitely are the men's advocate. Right. You take the men's side. Did this happen gradually? Do, how did this all come about? Why, why are you so um, pro-men? I think men today don't have a voice since women's lib mm -hmm. and women's lib I think started out with a great premise equal pay for equal work and this happened because of the invention of the pill prior to the pill women had to stay home and be barefoot and pregnant and get pregnant you know whenever their body told them to get pregnant mm -hmm. With the advent of the pill, they could delay that. So now women had options. They could go to school. They could get their education. They could start a career. They could get a job. They could feed, feed their little ones. Mm -hmm. So all of that changed then. And then I, th I think, um, unfortunately, these women could not solve the equal pay issue. Here it is some 40 years later. Right. It's still in the news. Right. Right. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the tagline that says, you know, 72 cents on the dollar to what men earn. Um, and so back in the day, because they couldn't solve that issue, they decided to hate on men. They decided to hate on all men, it mm. seems like. Now, are we talking about all women hating on The women's men? lib moms. The li women's lib moms. Okay. Right. That's kind of where it started. Okay. So now here we are decades and decades later, and it just seems like you know, men today are womanized more than ever i mean you turn on the cha you know on the tv and you see advertising or tv shows or in the media and men are denigrated denigrated you know you're stupid you're an idiot you're a caveman and that they're worthless and now that i'm earning money i don't need you the sexes are equal and there has been this blurring of the lines that the sexes are equal mm. well my background is in psychology and biology and um I think Mother Nature is not stupid. If, uh -huh. if we were meant to have one sex, we would all be ame amoebas. Uh -huh. There are two sexes for a reason. It's not to say that one sex is better than the other. Mm -hmm. It's just different. It's okay. just different. And yes. I think that one of the purposes of life is to come together and, you know, he brings his strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the the woman brings hers and you sort of meet in the middle and you bring each other up mm -hmm. i think you can't have a women's lib denigrating the opposite sex that that okay, doesn't make any that. that doesn't make any sense to me i agree with like that. if you're going to liberate you have to liberate both sexes you have to elevate both sexes not just one at a time true that true that however we come from a past that was definitely not equal and you have to say that the the benefits or the, the 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 positive thing that happened having women's live is you can go to work and not expect to have your bottom padded. You can go to work and not be expected to uh, work late to do everything to please the male boss. I mean, right. that was what was, and of so, course I so agree we had that. to even it up. We right. had to sort of get to that point of balance, right? right? Yes. Now, now, what have we overshot the balance? That's what it sounds like. I think you're we saying. have. Okay. Yes. So, so the the male bashing, right. traditional male bashing, right? Uh, 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 my hobby. Not just kidding. It's not my <laughs> hobby. But uh, w for the sake of this show. Men have gotten the short end of the stick. Sorry, I had to get that yeah. out of the way. Okay, <laughs> so so men, you're saying, have been uh, ridiculed, bullied. Give me examples, like where made where, to be second class citizens that okay. they're that they're not worthy of our attention. That somehow women are these complicated, you know, deluxe creatures, and men are not. They're just you know knuckle you know draggers. So so when when women say and men say, I had Dr. John Gray on, uh, on the show a couple of times, and that men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Mm -hmm. And you do admit that men are different and men are, and, and I've had a male panel on, on the show. Jarvis was actually on that panel the second time. Okay. And men will admit we are simple beings. Right. We are easy to please. 
nice meal. He, Jarvis is nodding. Okay. Nice meal, you know, um, uh, uh, regular sex, and keep your bodies in shape. And we're super happy. And yeah. there's not, and, you know, if there's, it was funny. The one question I asked, what could women do more of? Mm-hmm. And they all looked down at the same time. It was very funny. <laughs> I'll let you guess what that meant. Yeah. So, so. What do you say? Are you saying that that is an, uh, not a, a proper representation, that they're it simple? Is a proper, it is a proper representation. Okay. There's nothing wrong with being simple. I mean, men are linear. Look at their bodies. It's all linear. The, the penis is linear. The bodies are linear. You know, we're the opposite of that. We are curves. Okay. The boobs are curves. The rear end is curves. Um, you know, the private parts down there, it's all curves, right? Okay. It's not to say mm, that simple is bad. That. Yeah. It's not bad. Okay. It's just that we shouldn't discount men for being simple. It's just who they are. So, it's just who they are. So if they're happy with having three things, sex, sleep, you know, and some food, then why are we <laughs> making them wrong for that? Well, I don't know if we're making them wrong, uh, but it definitely, when, when that's all it's about and there's nothing else... And there's no, and I, and I'll, you know, I guess I'm representing the woman in this particular episode, but isn't there some place for, uh, respect for, uh, for, you know, treating a woman in a way that just makes her blossom? Why is that such a, uh, difficult concept? I'll give you an example. So I have totally, I'm a strong woman. Mm-hmm. I know that's a surprise to you. But <laughs> I still want a man to open my door and I still want them to pay for my meal mm-hmm. and I still want them to bring me flowers, okay? And to me, that is uh, something that shows me that I am... Um, they're sure. cast me out. Yeah. Okay. Right. So I've had a man tell me, I don't give flowers. I never give flowers, so don't expect them. Mm-hmm. He's, he's not in my life anymore, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've had another one who, uh, you know, that's that's then, right. right? That's in the past. You wanted, you wanted equal rights. Right. Open your own door. Right. <laughs> he's no longer in my life. So, so, so that's where I get confused. As to men who say, you know, that was then, this is now, you know, you wanted equal rights, so do for yourself what you can do, because I'm not doing it anymore. Right. That's not. Right. That's not fun. By the way, I get letters <laughs> on the flip side of your story. Men write to me to say they are holding the, the lobby door or the restaurant door or they are opening up the car door and the women are just slamming it in their face saying, you know, I can I can open the door myself. They are trying to be a gentleman. True. And the, the women today won't let them. Not all women today. Not all. Them. I will let you all yeah. and every time. <laughs> and I think that there are, again, yeah. I think that there's uh, like I'm generalizing, I'm guilty of it mm-hmm. too, saying that all men or most men are now in that camp. And I know that they're not. Jarvis yells at me all the time. That a real man does walk on the, the car side of the street. A real man does open the door f- for you. And I'm like, well, I, I ain't mean them. So somewhere <laughs> the real men are dropping off the face of the earth or something. Yeah. But then on the other hand, those women who mm-hmm. are saying, you know, don't open the door for me. I can do it for myself. That's not the majority either. Mm-hmm. That is not 88% of the women that I know anyways. Yeah. I know very, I, and there's, I always say there's like 2% in every population who the squeaky will that gets the voice. And then people make assumptions or generalizations based on those 2%. Right. So if we can agree, if right. you're representing the men and I'm yeah. representing the women, if we can agree to drop those mm-hmm. 2% extremes, sure. outliers, and deal with the majority, now we can have a discussion. So now I'm going to ask you, at, and if you've tuned in and you're listening to this quite interesting, you know, a little bit uh, heated, but good uh, debate uh, between men and women, you are tuned in to take my advice, I'm not using it, get balanced with Dr. Marissa, the new Asian Dr. Ruth, determined to make pleasure a G or a G spot rated <laughs> topic. I'm here with my co-host today, Linda Gross, every last week of the month. And we're talking about men who have been 
uh, overly um, uh, minimized now as a result yes. of women's lib and a result of equal rights, equal pay. Mm -hmm. So f do you feel that men, most men now, are um, emasculated yes. based on this treatment? Yes, okay. they are. And they how, are. how is that showing up? Here's how they're coping with it. Mm. And I've, as you said earlier at the top of the show, I interviewed 20,000 men, not 20,000 oh, people. Oh, 20, 20,000 men, men to okay. write the men's book, okay. Mastering Women. They are going to either extreme. They're either going over there to sit in the corner by themselves because they have checked out. Mm. They don't get the new dating rituals and mm -hmm. the new dating rules. Mm -hmm. So they think, since women are equal, some woman is going to hit on me. So I'll just sit over there in the corner and wait for the wom woman to do all the work. Okay. She, she, she'll take the risk. She'll get my number. She'll pay for half the check. We're going to go Dutch. It's all good. It's all on the woman because I don't know what she wants anyway. So we might as well just let the woman take the lead. Okay. What that's, percent? That's, what percent of that? Probably about 15%, I'd say, of men have checked out. Okay. Well, now, now, checked out or gotten the ball and run with it because no. because Taking the ball and run with it is a male is a male act action is may is a male quality right. so, so no they're so not running no, with any because ball i've met men who are like well i'm gonna get to that, oh, okay. that group of men that's my other <laughs> okay, group good. sorry sorry go ahead <laughs> the other group have decided i'm not playing by these women's lib rules either mm -hmm. so they've all become players that group Oh, so, okay. th you know, they're just going to go back to their animal instincts. Their animal instincts are, let's just have sex. Mm -hmm. We're not here for a relationship. We're just going to go for the physical release. And, you know, men's bodies, because of our hormones, because of testosterone, unlike us, mm -hmm. they have to release. So whether they're using their hand or they're using a woman, they have to release. That's what that testosterone dump does. They have okay. to, to make that happen. So they don't understand the rules. They think the rules are not fair. So they've checked out in a different way. They're just going to be a player. Mm. So okay. they're going to cheat on you. They're going to see you once or twice or whatever. And they're moving on to the next woman because they don't want to deal with you. It's just too complicated, too hard. There's nothing in it for them. Too hard. You know, back in our... Very hard. Yeah. Back in our mother's generation or our grandmother's ge generation, there were, shall we say, a trade of services, meaning that the woman stayed home, took care of the family, mm -hmm. the laundry was clean, the shirts were ironed, food was on the table at six o'clock. So today's woman... Is isn't having any of that. Right. And so she wants all the goodies, but there's nothing from her end that is helping the man. She's whoa, not whoa, 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 meeting whoa, whoa. the guy halfway. Okay. I see that a little differently. I see a woman not only having to take care of that end of the spectrum because we are really good nurturing and we are really good with kids, not better not part. better or worse but differently yeah. right we have that nurturing mm -hmm. and we have the estrogen versus the testosterone mm -hmm. so we do all of that and we do everything else right. and we do the work and the and all of the things that we need to do so so that to to depict a woman as taking advantage or wanting it all from a man I don't know. Something you said triggered me in that, obviously. Mm -hmm. But but th that that we don't we don't treat a man well because we want everything outside of the house now. That's not that's mean, not. So so you I think I heard you say we we treat a man poorly. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not. We're not following not, not the contract. Not that it's poorly. But okay. Back in our, you know, in previous generations. So the agreement was. There was sort of was, a trade off. Right. We like stayed I'm going to go slay the dragons and bring, you know, bring home the bacon. Right. And the mom's job was, you know, feed the kids, do the homework, you know, take, give them a bath, right. take care of the household, yes. take care of the social calendar. So there was a trade off. Right. So there has to be a new trade off. If, if guys aren't getting anything for their output, they don't want to play. It's like, why should they play? But they are getting, they come home and they ex still expect 
a meal on the table and the kids They expect run. it, but they're not getting it. Well, many of the women that I work with, uh, successful, very hardworking, single moms or working moms, they feel like a little bit shafted because not only, okay, we wanted the career, right? but... And so we expected some balance in the right. man stepping up and taking over some of the things at home. And that doesn't happen. So the man works all day hard, comes home and wants the woman to still, you know, come kick, to the door with the martini. Feet, he gets to yes. kick, and, and, kick his feet and, up and, and he gets to and relax and yeah, she's still going for another four or five going. hours. Exactly. So right. that, that's I don't not think fair is, either. That's not fair. Right. <laughs> Okay, we agree on that. So that's not fair. So, so yes, so we can agree that what has shifted. So we came from a misogynistic environment where the man and, and, you know, there's, I'm sure some of my feminist listeners are just like cringing right now because that whole hunting gathering and that's what a woman should be doing because Mm -hmm. that's the way she's built. I don't know if that, that I, I don't know if I agree with all of that. I also don't agree with all of the, um, you know, oh, it's a, such a complicated subject. Mm. So I don't agree also with a woman only doing, because I, I, I watch children who really want to have parents at home. Mm-hmm. And I feel that too, because if, uh, and, and I all I can do is give my personal experiences. When I coach people and they say, you know, I really, I can't see my, I, I, I have a real trouble with quitting my job because I love my kids and I really want to stay home, but I, I really want my career. I really get, uh, kudos from my career. Right. And, and that, that's a real issue. And I've shifted on this before. I said, nope, your job is as a the, mom. The male your is first saying this or the, or the female so saying The female saying, saying this. Okay, gotcha. The female saying this. So, so are you saying that what what can a man do to support a woman who wants to do both or really can a woman not do both it's so hard it's, uh, it's, isn't a, big, it? it's a big myth it, to say you can do it all uh, it you really cannot probably the one singular thing that i have found actually works is you have to go on a date night with your husband mm-hmm. you have to once a month twice a month if the budget will allow you have to unplug from everything, not talk about the kids, not talk about work, not talk about laundry, yeah. and go back to dating mode when you were, you know, in love right. and you really couldn't wait to see your partner. The couples who do that, they stay very happily married. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, you know, we live in such a busy world. Everything is demanding our attention right now. It's so hard to do that, but you have to make, you know, your your marriage and your partnership a Absolutely. priority. I agree with that. I agree with that. So tell me what the men, the top five things that you were surprised at that came out of the interviews. For the men, they wanted to know why does nice guy not work mm. because now, women all day long they keep saying i want a nice guy i want a guy who makes me laugh it's another myth by the way they don't want that um you know all these myths i want a guy that, that makes me laugh no, yes i don't. do no you don't yes i do no, you want something more than that well i, I mean it's part of that it's part of that not i don't want to laugh in the bedroom i don't want him to take off his clothes and i right. start laughing that's right. not what i want but i do want to laugh right. a and guy s- that gets my humor and i get his oh my gosh that's like so awesome yeah Okay. So anyway, these guys are, you know, chasing their tail, trying to be a nice guy. Mm-hmm. You know, you're saying, oh, honey, I need that living room wall repainted. And there you are. Or, oh, honey, I need you to go help me, you know, go tire shopping this weekend. And they're there. And oh, honey, my computer broke down. Would you help? And so they're doing all those nice guys, nice things. guy mm-hmm. things, but still not getting the respect and appreciation for it. And in fact, worse yet, it backfires and then they get put in the friend zone <laughs> charvis you know i'm right don't you <laughs> my assistant producer is laughing you better get on the mic soon because uh he's agreeing i told him i said you can either agree or disagree because this is going to be interesting but um okay so so go ahead keep going because those nice guy thing i'm not saying to the guy don't be a nice guy ever I'm saying for the first 90 days, don't, don't be a show nice that guy? card. No, don't show that card. She's got to earn it. 
she's got to earn it. You don't just give it to, to her free, you know, you don't give the candy away for, for nothing. She's got to be what yeah. you expect out of, out of the woman, you know? Okay. She, she's got to be charming. She's got to call you back. She's got to return your texts. She, she's got to, you know, cut, whatever floats your boat, sh- you have to see signs that she's participating in this relationship as well. So don't give away the nice, gar- the nice card so easily without seeing okay. that there, the, where's the reciprocation? Okay. Am I okay. getting my I needs can, met as I, well? I can actually check that. that. That's not bad advice for the guy. Just the same way it's not... Uh, that's why women should not give away everything in the first 90 days as well, because that's what they want. That's what they want. So, so the guy panel that said it's not, it's okay to do it on the first date. I, I absolutely disagree. I think that I heard we that shouldn't show. give I the, did with you? the guy panel. <laughs> <laughs> and because, that's why because, you're the men's advocate. Because that's biology. That's our animal but instinct. The, but you're asking, you're double standarding me, honey. You're saying do, men don't give it out for 90 days of the kindness and women give out just because they the guys want no, in I'm their not biology? No, sa- I'm not saying for women to give it up the oh, first okay. day. I'm okay. saying I understand why a guy would give you that answer. Oh. Because it's just biology. Okay. So he's got to use his human side of his brain, uh-huh. you know, to delay sexual gratifi- gratification. Okay. okay. So there is a responsibility so, yes. on his side. Yes. Okay. And okay. she should make him wait. All right. And I, and I do kind of agree. I think you were talking that day about, you know, well, is she going to be labeled a slut for doing it on the first right, date? Right. Despite what guys think and say, yes, yes, she is. Yes, yeah. she is going to be labeled. Yes. So, I agree. you know, you have to withhold the goods a little bit on, on that one, too. Yes, I so, agree. I, I agree. mean, if you're never if you're on vacation, you're never going to see this person ever again. Then I guess get into your animal mode. But, <laughs> <laughs> but if you want it to go somewhere. Jungle. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he's got to respect you, too. And, and a lot of guys don't, you know, will not respect you if right. you give it up on the first date. OK, so don't you nice agree? guy. I, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah. We're more agreement than disagreement so far. So if you're just if you've just tuned in, we are talking about sex as usual because it's the last week of the month. Sexual healing with Dr. Marissa on Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa with co-host Linda Gross, who is the co-host. Uh, sorry, who is the host of the show on KCAA AM 1050 on my CNBC News Radio syndicated channel. The show's called The Men's Advocate, and she's giving dating tips for men instead of women. And that last one was don't show the nice card for the first 90 days until the woman earns it. Give me another one. And the reason why you don't want to show the nice card right away is because there's no sexual tension in getting a computer or helping her with the tires or painting the wall or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. She has, not that the guy has to act on it. You don't have to act on 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 the sexual act, but you have to, exude Prime the pump you've you've got to exude that primal you know that's that sexual tension has to be there that's why the nice guy gets kicked to the end zone to the friend zone mm. because she doesn't feel that that sexual tension right so it, it's it's a balance right you don't act on it but it has to be there for her to want you okay but what about chemistry i mean nice guys i don't have chemistry with now, are you, saying, saying, it's because it's, are you saying yes. that if they weren't so nice, I might have chemistry with them? Y- yes. I'm not I'm not saying be an a-hole. That, that's, okay. You know, because people say, <laughs> ask me, you know, well, you're telling the guys to, you know, don't do the nice guy. So what else is there? No, yeah. just be neutral. Just be neutral. You're not being a jerk. You're still being a gentleman. Mm-hmm. You're, you're still being respectable. Okay. You're, you're not being, you know, on the other extreme either. Right, right. That's not so going to work balance. either. Right. It's a balance. So, but you have to do certain things that will let her know that you are interested in her sexually. Like what? Uh, you know, you can put on her coat and then just maybe hold the the fingers there a little bit too long. Or during <laughs> dinner, you would hold her forearm and mm-hmm. then pull away. Mm-hmm. And so she's going to think, well, what is he doing? You know, and the and the female mind is like, we always try to fill in the blanks. Like, why is he doing this? You know, uh-huh. at dinner, maybe you're touching knees. and mm-hmm. But you don't do it like 
for a long period of time. It's a tease. It's like you do it, okay. you get in there, and you get out. It is paying for dinner part of that tease? <laughs> is opening your car door part of that tease? Is bringing you a flower part of that tease? For some women it is, and I agree with you. I happen to be one of those women too. Yeah. So yeah. I, I like all those niceties. Yes. And I try to return the favor. I try to like do the niceties in return. So if his favorite drink is whiskey, you know, or whatever, maybe the next time he comes over... I'll I'll pour his favorite, you mm-hmm. know, for yeah, favorite absolutely. whiskey. You know, so it it you have to like pay attention to see well hmm, what would turn the guy on too. And it, as he's doing that nice gesture with opening up the car door, as a as a woman, we can think of nice che- gestures to do in return. But when there's no gestures coming this way, it's yeah. very difficult to give a gesture that way. That except is true. For one gesture that's in between these. That fingers. is true. And I and it took me. <laughs> forever many decades to learn the art of reciprocity because I'm by nature I'm a giver give Mm -hmm. give 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 and Mm -hmm. it's like you can't be that either because that's like an extreme it's out of balance in the other extreme right so you have to see and give and then you know it has to be this volley it has to be you know yeah I was people take turns not that you're keeping score no no no. but if it's all giving in one direction that doesn't work it's all about balance and then you're incompatible and move on to the next date yeah yeah absolutely because I I've I have grown that way because I used to I was told once you know you have when I was much younger and much thinner (laughs) much hotter I I they the guy said you know you have this what have you done for me lately attitude and ooh, I you know, that was growth. That was, uh, I was not, in. I had to take that in and I have, you know, really tried to, but then I think I went the other way, ended up in a marriage that cost me almost a half a million dollars to get out of. And I went totally the other way and wow. gave, 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 and obviously I'm still giving. And in fact, the judge, when my, when the judgment came down, the lawyer looked at the judge and said, so that's not fair, your honor. And the judge looked straight at me and said, well, you wanted equal rights, so and I have the e- order. <laughs> e- yeah. So I have every reason to be a little pissed off, but I am not. I really, yeah. I'm. I, I have really worked to absolutely come to that middle. I, I am not a man. The man is not a woman. We have different strengths in different areas, and the best approach is that balanced approach to try to get to the middle right so when i was taken on this beautiful date a couple of weeks ago and you know just treated exactly like a princess like i've always wanted to be treated i brought you know a little gift for him because i've learned that it is about reciprocity and you do have to let them know that you appreciate that so but do you know that one way that men feel love Mm -hmm. loved is by being appreciated. Mm-hmm. I do know Can, that. Do you know, do know that how long a, a sweet smile and a thank you goes? Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't have to even have to be a physical gift. Mm-hmm. But a lot of women, oh, they just expect the guy to pick up the tab. Right, or they just, right. you know, there's there's an right, expectation there's, there which is puts negativity right. in it for the guy. And uh, that, that appreciation thing goes a long way. Yeah. Great point. And uh, we have gotten to the point, actually, we're over to that time of the show where I thank the sponsors who make this possible. So we'll be back in two and two. Peace in and peace out. How do you prepare a young teen for the sexual culture they're growing up in today? Science teacher Dave Beck's hilarious and harrowing book, They Ask You What?, does just that. It gives the student, their parents and teachers the knowledge and tools to deal with the reality of today's overwhelmingly sexual American culture. And it's a great, fun, thoughtful read. Read it yourself. Give it to your teen and or their teachers. Available for Kindle download and soft cover purchase at Amazon.com. Did you know that women are capable of over 11 different kinds of orgasms, and yet 87% of women are sexually unsatisfied? Did you know that 9 out of 10 couples desire deeper intimacy in and out of the bedroom? If you desire more pleasure, better orgasms, and a more sacred sensual connection, visit DeviWardTantra.com and get your free female orgasm guide to uncover the top three blocks preventing you from having the pleasure, intimacy, and orgasms you Crave. That's DebbieWardTantra.com. And welcome back to 
Take my advice. I'm not using it. Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at Naturally High Noon at Universal Broadcasting Network and Thursdays and Saturdays on my syndicated CNBC News radio station, KCAA AM 1050. And today it is Sexual Healing with Dr. Marissa, that monthly series that is very popular. I wonder why. And today we have the author of... A, at first, when I read the first part of the title, I was like, what do you mean mastering women? That sounds like we're going backwards once again into a misogynistic uh, uh, environment. But actually, it's a guide. It's a guide to try to balance out. Well, what... there, there are two definitions of the word master. Okay. One is master and slave, that somebody is subservient. Fifty shades of gray. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the other definition of master is like Tiger Woods. You're an expert at your field. You're an expert at golf. You have mastered golf. Maybe not so, anywhere else, but right. you've mastered golf. Right. So, <laughs> I don't know if I would use him as an example. Let's right. use Michael Phelps right. as a master. Perfect. Well, he's got a shady. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true, right? Uh, right. Is there anyone well. <laughs> left? We get lost. Bill Cosby on that. We lost. Anyways, um, Jordan or you know who, whoever it is. Yeah. No. Can't Nelson, go, Nelson Mandela. There. Nelson Mandela, His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Okay, okay. we're good now. There are a few. <laughs> <laughs> we had to go spiritual to get yeah. there, right? Okay. So, so I have a few men who actually tell me that they read the book four and five times with a yellow highlighter, mm. that it is their Bible, that everything you want to know about women and every situation that you can think of that you've encountered, that you've had roadblock after roadblock and not getting anywhere, that they read my book and it's like, oh my God, it's like the okay. key that unlocks the door. It's like, that's where she's coming from? I had no idea. Mm. Now, I'm <laughs> going to have to do the moose on the table question. What makes you feel like you can answer for all of the women in the world? Aha, uh -huh, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, you know, as a little girl watching women's lib, I just did a head slap at the time, you know, and I thought, what are you women talking about? Don't you know that women have all the power anyway? It's just that we didn't use it. And I look at someone like Jackie Kennedy. There was a very famous summit um, that they went, that she and her husband, well, the husband and she went to Paris to sign this particular treaty. And, um, you know, normally this sort of thing is presidential level. You know, it's executive level stuff, right? It's, it's, you know, the treaty that has to get signed. She took that whole seminar, that whole convention, whatever you want to call it, summit, I guess they call it. And she had everybody looking out of the palm of her hands. It was not a sh for sure thing that JFK was going to get that Why? treaty what, signed. What was she able to... Because of her feminine ways, her feminine power with her charm and grace and ability and, and her uh, ability to be social. She turned that whole thing around where all the guys at the summit were eating out of her hand and they... Pr they actually like handed the right. treaty to so, her so the bottom her line sign and the famous line the famous kennedy line is i'm the guy that just happened to accompany jackie jackie kennedy to this and mm -hmm. to this summit mm -hmm. so he he was like a byproduct he didn't even have to be there she could have gotten that summit signed herself so the application for strong women yes is can we still can we have equal rights mm -hmm. okay and not be subject to abuse at work and at home, which I don't, is which I don't is think one either, of the reasons yes. why the whole march happened and why the whole effort happened. And I right. will to this day not condone any of the past, right. uh, and I will not blame the women's movement for because the good that it did mm -hmm. to bring us to where we are is absolutely um, phenomenal, and and it had to be. I will agree that in that push or in that uh, effort, mm -hmm. in the efforting, we may have lost our power. Right. We may have gained our power in business or in strategic planning or all the things that are no longer just in a man's domain, but we've lost our ability to connect right. with our feminine power. Right. Which is... 
the charm and right. the and the appreciation and the sensitivity right. and the vulnerability right. all of that and that right. i will give you yeah. that i will give you okay. so what else in the 20,000 interviews did did uh, was surprising to you you know when just touching base on on this last uh, question i think for so many decades, if not centuries, we have seen how men have conducted themselves in business. Mm -hmm. And typically, the guys who are at the top, they are aggressive, they are risk takers. And I'm not saying for women to not have those qualities, you you need like a whole, you know, menu of qualities Mm -hmm. when you're when you're up at the top, right? But let that not be your only quality because unfortunately then you get labeled I, I know it's a double standard but you get labeled the b word right because you're too aggressive and that's and it. too you know the, the the lion's mouth that's roaring and mm-hmm. always roaring and you know there are other ways to solve the same problem yeah. so for some reason or another i think women have gotten away from using our immense power immense feminine power that we have that we could probably solve the same problem in a different way yeah we don't have we don't have to act like men to get the job done but so yes you know it's like where are young girls learning that today i don't think they're learning that but It's it's a it's a lost art however i still um i i I remember vividly a panel that i was on at ucla Mm -hmm. Uh, I taught there for six years, and there was me, a young doctor, and then an older generation lawyer and an older generation businesswoman. Mm -hmm. And the the older generation were still teaching you have to act like a man you have to be like a man you have to you just you know stand like a man you have to dress like a man and the the doctor the young doctor kicked me under the table and I looked at her and she looked at me and it's like wow and then the, I got a slap in the head it's like yeah. it's because they did that yeah that my own mother we did that to me got yeah where we are now so we cannot yeah. Blame or condemn them or or say they were wrong because of that strength that right. they showed and had to show. I don't you know, Jackie is a great example, but Jackie was one. Maybe Audra uh, Hepburn as well, I would put in that category. But it is because of those pioneers who said no, mm-hmm. like strongly, like a man, did right. we get to where we are now. Right. I'm sorry. Right. I cannot say that that was an error in right. the direction for I'm not saying that it's an error, and maybe that's the path that we had to take to make it work. I don't know. I, I'm just saying It was that, the path. Right. I'm just saying <laughs> We that, don't know if it was the best path, but it was the path. Right. So I'm just saying that many, many decades have now gone by. Do we still need to operate from that place? Absolutely. Because maybe, maybe there needs to be a rebirth and a regrowth to... You know, the sexes are just so divided now, I see. Yeah. You know, and it we need to, like, come together and figure out ways to come together rather than tear, tear ourselves apart even further. So so I got a question uh, from a listener. So are you saying that it is, are we going back to a place where a man is supposed to take care of a woman? You know, I have a w- the woman's book, too. Okay. The woman's book is called Hitched in 90 Days or Less. Mm-hmm. And I teach women in that book to be so adorable, so irresistible, so desirable that the guy is tripping over himself to propose to you within 90 days. And so the insight That's that I learned... That's assuming you want them. Yes. Okay. Assuming that, the, that you want that. Don't pick up the book if you don't. But, <laughs> right. Um, or, or it could just be for any relationship. You don't have to get married. But to just be that adorable woman, that irresistible woman. Who wouldn't want to be irresistible, right? So the insight that I that I used came from interviewing these 20,000 men. I mean, what better secret is there mm-hmm. than to have that in your back pocket to see what men are really up to? What is it that they really want? Right. And so in the woman's book, I say especially for us strong women Mm because you know we're slaying dragons all day long and you know we're type a personalities and whatever pick a guy who's at least one percent more of a man than you are 
<laughs> because it's not going to work any other way. Right, right. Because right. the the counter to well, that is that is... controlling. Though is that power? No, controlling. What do you mean, more of a man? Take Where's charge. The... You know, take charge. Take a risk. Um, you know, make reservation. Like whatever it is, uh-huh. it's like it can't all be us doing all the work. True, but if we then, don't do it, then, they don't do it. If I then, don't make then he's plans... not the right guy. Okay, he's not the right guy. Put right. throw him back in the ocean. He's okay. not the right guy because yeah. the counter to that is then we start getting into our ugly female behavior, which is manipulation and controlling and and nagging and like who wants to be that woman? That's not not cool. Shut up, Jarvis. So if he's not taking charge, <laughs> then you got to throw him back. And right. so so I had a really hard time yeah, but personally. That's difficult. It's though, very difficult because if I you're had a, a hard strong time, woman, I know. How do you find a one percent stronger than you? I mean, guys that are on LinkedIn and Facebook that uh, approach me with the "Hey, hi," or "This is who I am." Yeah. Who are you? Yeah. And, and it's like, really? <laughs> like, um, I know this isn't a dating site, but how would you like to talk? And am I supposed to, is that supposed to be an approach? Turning you on? No. Okay, good. No. Good. I'm, no. I, okay. So, so I, I have a, cause we don't, we only have a couple more minutes. Yeah. What is the ideal mm-hmm. after 20,000 male interviews? Yes. What is the ideal beginning, middle and end or beginning and into a relationship, behavior yeah. of a man and a woman, okay? So two people, case scenario, you meet someone, mm-hmm. your eyes meet, there's an attraction. Yes. What's next? Probably, I think one of the best ways to meet is to have a common interest or have something Okay, let's in say common. we already did so, that. So let's say you're at the jazz, jazz festival. Yeah, you're at the jazz club or, you know, you like that jazz musician, so do I, blah, blah, blah. That's, a, that's okay. an instant icebreaker. So, so you start talking. The right. man talks to the woman first, or the woman talks to the man first. It could be either way. I talk to people. I talk to people all day way. long. And then, it, and it doesn't necessarily have to he be. He doesn't ask you out. He doesn't ask for your number. Does the girl ask for the number? I say no. No. So no, because so, men are slower than us. Okay. So then so, he. So that's a missed opportunity for him. Yeah. And you. And yeah. and you just don't say. Then anything. you got to have the book that says how to be so irresistible, where he's not missing the opportunity. Because there so was what something did she about do? there was so, something that she did but you or just didn't said do. He was slow. Well, he can be slow, but still, there's stuff that lights so, his fire. So if he's attracted <laughs> enough, yes, he, he will, will ask it. you for a number. And if, and he's if he doesn't shy, ask you for a number, because a lot number, of guys hide behind the oh, I'm too shy. Right? No, no. I've seen guys who are shy as a snail, and they're still okay. asking too. So, so here's to women. If you meet a guy and you think there's an attraction, but he doesn't ask for your number, he's just not that into you. That's what you're saying based right. on, okay? Right. So then right. you you, throw, you you don't throw him back because you never had him. So so then you go out again. And let's say he does ask for your number, okay? Right. So then what happens? The you number, wait for him the, to call you. The number one quality that men are looking for when they first meet you uh-huh. Just be chill. Just be be fun. Okay, that's the number one quality. How hard is that to okay. do? Really? Practically, like let's don't translate don't, that. Don't be thinking about. I'm gonna call you. Okay. Yeah. How do I know you're fun? You don't go. So when are we gonna get together? We don't say that. The woman we just say, say that. Woman, no. woman just says, "How are you? What's what are you up to? You know, whatever." You yeah. wait for them to yeah. say what you, if they say whoa yeah. if they say so you want to grab a coffee. I'm like, grab a coffee. I would like you to ask me out on a date. Yeah. Din- how would you go out to dinner with me? Right. At on Friday or Saturday, what works better for you? That it's been so long since I get I get the uh, so. When can we get together? Uh, for yeah. <laughs> for okay. So well, the so, guy's not so being I'm a leader. giving the. Thank you. He's not being a leader, right. so that's so not a, a leader, good match. So not a He's got to lead. Another, He's got to take the initiative. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing a lot of fish. There's going to be a lot of fish in the sea. So, so then he says, if he says, and he maybe you're he at the jazz you, festival, he okay. might say, "Let's get a glass of wine." Okay. I don't know if coffee is appropriate at a jazz festival, but you know, and if you're into wine, sure, I don't follow drink, him but over. That's okay, I, I'll you know, or, or it could be a soda or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You know? So then, so, so then you go. Opening. So then you're talking. Yeah. Okay. What should a woman not say 
according to your yeah. interviews, women, that turns them off. Women are very, just by nature, relationship oriented. And where is this going? And is he going to ask me out? Uh, and the babies and the cows and the two picket fan. You know, don't even go there. Just be fun. Uh -huh. Just, you know, who doesn't want to be around somebody who's fun? You ever been to a party and somebody walks in and you can just tell that person's fun. I want to go hang out with that person. Right. Be right. that person okay. one on one with this guy because that's all the guy is looking for. And that in and of itself should get the, the, the digits rolling. Here. And then if a guy meet on the second date says, I want us. I want a relationship with you. Usually guys are not that fast, but okay. Okay. Not so, that so, fast. Yeah, I know. But They're if slow. they are, if they are. Do you are... know that we know in five to 15 minutes, we know if this this is a good partner for us. Uh -huh. Guys, it takes 90 days. So you got to be on his timetable. I know. You can't but, force but if it because but, but he'll he... run. No, but if you're not, if you're feeling the 90 days and they're feeling the 15 minutes. Yeah. That's no, they're feeling weird. the 15 minutes for sex. I don't think they're feeling the 15 minutes to have a relationship with you. Okay. Right? Well, I... <laughs> Well, I don't know. He's back in the sea now, so oh. <laughs> we'll never know on that one. <laughs> but um, thank you so much. Your book you can get on Amazon, mm -hmm. and you can get your show. Yes, on KCAA every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, and you can get it from the uh, KCAA website, uh, kcaradio.com forward slash advocate, or you can get it on the TuneIn app. Lots of different ways. Wonderful. And I am going to thank you, Linda Gross. Thank you. <laughs> the men's advocate, literally, for being on my Sexual Healing with Dr. Marissa. We are at the end of the show where I get invite you to my balance bar, where I get to tell you where I am uh, so you can meet me at the end of this month on Saturday, uh, it's actually in my purse. I was supposed to get the flyer out. The Raj Music Festival. I will be singing with the absolutely amazing Agape International Choir. And if you missed last week's interview with the founder of the festival, Dr. Ricky Byers Beckwith, also the wife of my big brother, Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, then you'll have to see it because it is a great show. I've never gotten so many backhanded compliments from her in my life. But uh, please do join me on Saturday. It's in Woodland Hills. If you go to rajfestival.com, you will get all of the information. We've got great music. We've got family fun and uh, more details if you watch that show. As well, my free Asian Oprah giveaway today is 3,000 free tickets to that Raj Music Festival. <laughs> So you can go directly there and tell them that Dr. Marissa says you can have a free ticket. Just kidding. Every, it is free. So you can bring as many people as you'd like and enjoy a day of music and me. You get to, uh, I'm doing spontaneous classes uh, with balanced Tai Chi Gong as well. Uh, the 21 Day Fast from Complaining with Dr. Marissa continues. September 1st will be round 51. And if you'd like to help me build the app game version for that fast, go to www.gofundme forward slash H. R-A-X-L-O. And then finally, in October, I will be at the Asian Women Entrepreneurs Luncheon at the Anaheim White House. If you'd like to support a wonderful organization that helps Asian women uh, with education and get ahead, that would be awesome. Next week, I have author Malena Embaris, who uh, wrote a very interesting book out of Transylvania and she will be next Tuesday so tune in to take my advice I'm not using it get balance with Dr. Marissa it's all about balance peace in and peace out